Welcome to the VFX Artist Podcast. Today we are with Shonda Hunt. I'm a freelance compositor. Um, I've been around, I worked in Vancouver, I worked in Montreal. I did a stint in Michigan, compositing for the auto industry, mostly for GM. And then I hopped back to New York where I initially started. And now I'm just back into it, working at different companies in New York. That's really cool. So yeah, actually it's funny. I was I was seeing your LinkedIn and I was gonna get in touch with you for an interview. And then you actually got in touch with Kofi because he put a shout out for mothers that were working in VFX. Yeah. So I guess we've got a lot of a lot of ground to cover on a lot of different topics that are all kind of yeah. connected with VFX. I guess the usual question is how did you get started? How did you what got you into VFX? A friend of mine was um, attending NYU for computer animation, and I had already like graduated from um, Syracuse. I did advertising design, so it was like more digital graphic design type stuff. And yeah, so I was always like the third wheel for my friend, like my best friend and her husband. And they're like, oh yeah, um, he, he has a panel at NYU, you wanna come along? And I was like, sure, it was like, I wasn't doing anything else. So yeah, I hopped in there. And it was actually for visual effects. So all the v all these VFX supervisors from New York City were there and they like showcased the work. They talked about the work. They talked about what was involved in, you know, visual effects. And it was kind of like just a kind of an overview of everything. And I was just like blown away. I was like, wow, this looks so cool. Cause like I knew he was in school for computer animation, but I didn't know what he was actually doing. And then when I saw it, I was like, wow, that looks really cool. And then from there, I was like, yeah, I, I think this is what I actually want to do. So I went to Pratt. They had a computer animation certificate program. So, but I mean, I didn't know anything about the industry. So I was learning like ZBrush, uh, Cinema 40. So I was like learning everything. And I'm like, well, this is a lot. Like, I don't know yeah. what any of this, you know, kind of is. And my friend, he... He had then, by the time I finally did go back to Pratt and like start taking the classes, he's like, well, I'm working at Sony if you want to come and, you know, shadow people in different departments so you can see kind of how they're working and how they're using the programs that you're using, that you're learning, um, you, you should come and do that for like a week. So I flew out to Albuquerque that was like in New Mexico when Sony was in New Mexico. And uh, I sat with different artists from every department and I was just watching them work like, and they were kind of explaining to me what they were doing. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. And um, the last person I sat with was a, was a compositor and um, she was just like showing me everything. And from, from, I like when I was watching her work, like it was, she was like, it seemed like she was putting so much like fine detail into like the finishing touches. And I'm like, I have a background of traditional art. So I paint, I do pottery, I do metalsmithing, wood shop. I mean, I took paper making and weaving, like I love art. So, and I love like the finishing like touches and like those little details that just make it all come together in the end. So when I saw her work and I was like, yeah, I think like that, I think that's the part that I want to kind of like focus on. And, you know, she was explaining it to me while she was working. And I was like, yeah, I think I... Um, I want to learn Nuke because she was using Nuke and um, they didn't they didn't even have Nuke at Pratt when I was going there. So then I was like, well, how am I going to learn this program? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I had an unpaid internship at the Molecule. Um, and from there, I started learning Nuke. And then, you know, I started getting like freelance jobs, doing little projects in Nuke. Um, it, for it's, initially it was like for some smaller independent films and, uh, like they were just like, they needed Roto, they needed, you know, sky replacement, stuff like that. So I was kind of like just dabbling a little bit in and then still learning, of course, because I, I basically learned Nuke on my own aside from, like, I didn't take a formal Nuke class. I yeah. just learned it from the internship and then the work that I was doing. Um, I watched a lot of tutorials. I read a lot of books and and then just hopping around and freelancing and asking questions from senior uh, senior artists and supervisors and stuff. And that's kind of how I got like really deep into Nuke. 
That's cool. Just a curiosity, what um what tutorials and books were you using when you were learning? Well, I I mean I use Pluralsight. <laughs> I use yeah. FX PhD. Yeah. Uh Noof 101, like every company I went to, like it was funny because like everyone had that book at their desk. Yeah. <laughs> like with the CD. I I did read um The Art and Science of Digital Compositing. Yeah, you kinda gotta read that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of and then um, I, when I was working in Michigan, um, because I, I was really like, I, I was learning all this stuff and I don't know if I was necessarily understanding it all, but like, th- I think there was like a, like a bridge for like from learning and then understanding and then like, you know, taking what you know and understand and then using it, you know, effectively. So um, I was, I was learning all this stuff and I was like, still I, I would still meet people who I felt like they just knew so much and I just admired them. I was like, how do you know that? Like and when I would ask, like, I, I actually started, um, I, I would even ask the TDs like how they were scripting. I don't, I don't know Python. I feel like I want to learn it, but I was just even like, how do you even know how, like whenever I came up with, came into, ran into a problem, and and say the lead was um, explaining something to me. I'm like, how do you how do you know that information? Yeah. Like, I was always like, where are you finding this? I'm reading all these books. I'm watching these tutorials. I'm not seeing anything about this. So that's when I knew that I kind of had to start understanding the program more versus just like kind of knowing all the stuff. Because I guess with that deeper understanding, then you just understand how things work. So when you come into a bunch of different problems, you just know how to solve them just because you know how the actual program is, you know, work, how the tools are working and the program is working too. I mean, I have a whole stack of books and sometimes on the weekend, I'll just read another chapter or I'll find a YouTube tutorial. YouTube actually is pretty good right now. They have a lot of really good tutorials. I think Escape Studios has a good channel. The yeah. Foundry has a channel. So there's a lot of like information. Now I was paying for um the the ones I um was using, Pluralsight <laughs> and FX PhD, but I'm like loving finding the free ones on YouTube because I don't pay for any tutorials anymore, but I still feel like like I like to watch them because sometimes there's just little things that you pick up on. Yeah, or that this... you like didn't realize. Or, or just they yeah. do it differently, right? Like you know how to do it, but then there's someone and they show you a way and it's like it's I don't know if it's better, but it's just a different way of doing it. And then you think, well, maybe I'll try it and see if like why they might do it that yeah. way instead then, of the way I'm doing it. And maybe it's better, maybe it's not. And then sometimes I'll even take that and I'll combine it with like my way. And I'm or it'll just be like a spark. It'll give me an idea to just try something different. So yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So when when was this? When did you start using Nuke? Just out of curiosity. Oh, when was that? Oh my god. It's, Seemed like so long. Let's see. I I was just learned. My daughter's set almost eight, and I I was actually like j- just when I was transitioning into this industry, I was pregnant. So it was kind of like you know. So I guess it w- I would say about maybe eight years. Yeah. Well, actually, I was in school a little bit before, so maybe ten years. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is kind of similar. So I um actually a bit longer now. My son is going to be fourteen, but I, he was a yeah baby and I, I was actually learning shake but I remember like I, I had like baby I was holding baby basically like so I only had one <laughs> hand to do the whole, the whole tutorial so uh so I yeah I do I do I also associate very much with this like you've totally lost track of time and you have to like think of how old your kids are to know I think that's a very parent yeah thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know when you start associating everything like wait my daughter I was <laughs> Yeah, like, when was that? I don't know. Uh, wait, oh, yeah, my daughter was just being born, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so how old are you? So you have an eight-year-old? Do you have uh, any other children? Or? Yeah, I just have one daughter, and she's um, turning eight in July. Oh, cool. I've, I've got two. So mine's uh, going to be 15, my son, and my daughter is 10. So you're freelancing. Yeah, I- so I did a four-year, I did a full-time four years um, in Michigan, And that was kind of like, it was coinciding with my daughter's age. So she was like Mm. between one and, you know, those early years where you kind of have to mold your child to say. So I kind of like felt like I needed that stability and, you know, a freelance job. I mean, a full-time job so that I could really kind of coordinate my schedule to make sure I was having a good work-life balance during, 
you know, the first like five years of her life. Uh, absolutely. But also, I guess as a freelancer, um, it's different being a freelancer when you're very junior to when you're quite senior because you, you do get more oh, yes. control as a senior freelancer, right? Yeah. As a junior, you just got to suck 100%. it up and take what you get. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so um, the, I'm also curious about the United States with freelancers because obviously it's not an issue for us in in, in Europe or in the UK. Um, it's, it's like oh. things like healthcare where... You know, it, it's connected oh, for your yeah. employer in the US and stuff like that. We don't have to think about that. So I've never thought about it. And I don't know how you do that as a freelancer in the US. So I was kind of curious to ask you about that. Yeah, um, actually, I just pay for my own health care. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it definitely costs more. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I, it's like for me, I like now that I decided to jump back into freelance, I just it like I when I came to New York I was like okay I'm gonna freelance again but then I started getting like full-time job offers and I was like well do I want to take those so that I kind of have like the benefit package or you know all of that mm -hmm. but actually the cool thing was like when the pandemic happened um I spent like every day with my daughter like we were just home all day every day like we were doing so much stuff and it kind of reminded me how I grew up like just going outside and playing like we were playing softball and soccer like we were just outside like just playing and I was like wow like you know I had we hadn't I hadn't had the time when I first came back to New York before the pandemic it was like I was commuting four hours a day and um and then it was like I really didn't have that much time sometimes I would have to work 12 hours so it was like there wasn't really a good balance so I was like well do I do I want to jump back to full-time or do I want to stay freelance? And I was kind of like on the fence, but after the pandemic, I was like, I think I have to keep freelancing because it just gives me so much more flexibility. And even though I have these extra expenses of like health insurance and things that I would normally get from a work package, um, I would rather pay that and have my time and my, yeah. you know, flexibility. So yeah. Have, have your control. So are you working mostly from home at the moment? Working yeah, I've been working too. remote since, uh, I think right right when the pandemic started, I've yeah. just been working from home. Because before so they so just much said you better. can't do it. They just said you can't do it. And then they were like, oh, actually you can. <laughs> yes. And, you know. and, and I knew a few people who were working remote. And I'm like, how do you get these jobs where you can work from home? You know, as compo like compositors, I knew some people who were like always booking like these jobs from home. And I was like, how do you do that? Like, I need to do that. And now it's like so many options to do that. So, so you're... Great. Are you in New York? Well, I live in New Jersey, but yeah, live, I, I, I'm working for companies in New York. Yeah. Okay. Are all your clients in New York or do you, and now that you're remote, are you, are you branching out and getting clients in different places? Yeah. I, um, I work for a company in LA. I work for a company in Chicago. Um, I'm possibly working for a company in Portland. So I, yeah, now it seems like I can kind of branch out a little bit, which okay. is better. Yeah, definitely. because it's just different kind of work. Like, you know, I, I I think it's the tax credits that drive certain works to certain cities, and I'm not sure how that's working with remote work. But it just seems like there's more opportunities to like do different kind of work that's like specific to a city or you know a different city based on yeah. their tax credits or whatever. So yeah. Oh, that's interesting because I know that here um you for example if you move to and this is something for example a lot of european workers after with brexit and the pandemic together it was like oh well I might as well go back mm -hmm. to france or portugal and then work it. but then you can't work on the tax credit shows from london you can work in with the london office because we have you know tv advertising and that's not tax credit at all but a lot of the hollywood movies the big franchise movies mm -hmm. are, are like connected with the tax credits so there is a limit or you could go back and work you know if you went and stayed with your family for like three months or a certain period of time but beyond oh, that okay. you're like breaking the tax credit thing so it's interesting that you can right. kind of get around that um with the local ones yeah i'm not sure if it's specific to each show though or if it's just you know I th like there show it might be show specific so i think it can be and it can be also like the 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 particular state right the particular um, 
the condition mm-hmm. of that that particular country you know like obviously Canada is quite strict that you have to be in Canada but then maybe if it's just another state in the US yeah you know maybe it's it's hard to say you have to be in this state I mean <laughs> physically right um if your office especially if the workstation all the work is there I mean remote is is very is it very well yeah that's true thing. they're remoting like, into the workstation so <laughs> <laughs> yeah your work is in you know LA right like your your computer's in LA yeah. all the files are in LA nothing is there except for you you looking at it um mm-hmm. so, <laughs> uh, so are you uh, are you using uh, like a um a teradici something like that like your own obviously you've yeah your i mean own. honestly i think i've downloaded like six different programs on my computer i'm surprised that everyone has a very specific setup so i use teradici um i use rgs yeah um uh, and then there's some Amazon web service, right. iCloud sort of provider. So yeah, I I have a lot of different ones, but right now I am using Teradici. Uh, the the Amazon one kind of makes sense, right? Because if you I guess if it's remote, then you might as well just have everything on the cloud in the first place. Yeah, but, but you yeah. know, I think that one has been maybe the one that's been that had the most problems out of all the ones I use, like. Because <laughs> sometimes Amazon Web Services goes down, and then you know. Well, then yeah, then you're out. <laughs> so, what kind of stuff are you working on, Shonda? Yeah, so I mean, I this, I mean, between last year and this year, after I started back working after the pandemic, um, I worked on some feature films, some um, Marvel movies. Um, I've worked on some commercials, um, TV shows, of course. Uh, for mostly, it looks like for streaming services, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, Amazon, and uh, yeah, and it looks like some some regular films that are just going to be released on like Netflix or something too. So, so without like obviously without breaking any kind of NDAs or anything, are there are there any shows like anything that you're really excited about that you can tell us about? That's the hard without bit. Breaking <laughs> without breaking any NDAs, <laughs> I would say like. The the most exciting work that I I mean I I had never worked on like something as like a Marvel film before so like all of the um you know Marvel films that I got to work on between you know the past like year those have all been like really cool like um there's just so many effects the show the movies are so big um just even compositing the kind of footage that you get you know the the before yeah. type footage it's been like really challenging I've I've had to like try new try a bunch of different techniques and um learn different processes and stuff and I actually learned other programs while working on those kind of movies uh. so yeah I actually actually usually don't watch Marvel films but since I started working on them I was like like just to see like the before yeah. and then like watch the movie and I'm like wow like this is really cool like I was really excited about those. That's that's really interesting and and I guess it's also the kind of show you can show your daughter and they can talk to their friends because that you know that's that's very much the age group where they you know they're really into those movies. So you were talking about new, learning new techniques and software. Um, I was going to ask you about about what what was new on those movies like I guess stuff like Deep and um, mostly probably I would say um, just integrating Unreal. Oh wow! So, and that seems like it's more on the the Maya side versus like the Nuke side. If you need to relight something, you don't have to like go back to Maya. And I, I actually was working in Maya a little bit. Like I wanted to get into the lighting and a little bit of animation and stuff like that. Oh. So I was able to like do stuff in Maya and then export it. So you export it to Unreal. And then when you have notes back, you can just start adjusting them like quickly and on real versus going back into your heavy Maya scene, you know, and spending all that time rendering out stuff. Oh, wow. This is this is like so. So you're not only working on bigger movies, but you're like, I mean, branching out as well. So I, I get yeah. what, did you use Maya before or are you back to your like learning on the job that you did when you started? No, I I did use Maya. So basically when I'm working at a company where they use like 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 you know, it's well it, I guess most companies where they have like they have their different departments. Now usually they try to keep you like in your department, but um like when I see stuff, I'm like I like I I'll, I'll ask, I'll say, Can I can I do that task? I think I can track this shot, you know, I can match move this, or I think I can, re- like, if there's a lighting change, I'm like, 
well, I want to learn lighting. So then, you know, they'll set up a demo for me to to work with one of the CG artists and they'll show me how to light stuff. And then they'll start assigning me lighting tasks and then they'll give me feedback. So I, I like to do some Maya stuff on my own, like little things. Like if I can light something, if I can animate, I, I know I can't model and um, I'm not, I'm not a good animator. So I can, I can adjust an animation that was already done. Like <laughs> I can't animate it from scratch. So uh, little stuff like that, like I'll I'll request to do those kind of that kind of work. That's interesting. I'm um, I'm interested also as a freelancer. I would imagine that's a little bit harder because when your staff, you know, they're paying you anyway. So if it's quiet and comp, they might as well get you doing something else. And that's happened to me. Yeah. But as a freelancer, I'd imagine that you know because they're paying you your day rate, they want they want you doing you know what you're best at. And they want to get their money's worth kind of thing. Um, so it's yeah. interesting that they would that you've actually instilled the confidence to let them have you do, you know, things that aren't your primary strength. And that's, you know, well done. I mean, that's really impressive. I'm, I'm really interested in well, the, how you get into The biggest that. key was I would try to finish my task relatively fast. And of course they can always just pile on more comp tasks. But I was like, well, you know, I can do my task, but I also want to learn, like, you know, it was, yeah. it's not like I just have to spend all day like comping and um, yeah. So that's kind of, I think why, because it was like, I was able to handle my shots on the comp side and it wasn't taken away from that, you know? Yeah. And then it also was very helpful when I was able to do 3d tasks, you know, just as, just as well. So it was kind of like a win-win. It took maybe a day or something for someone to show me what to do and then I could jump into it. So at the end of the day, it's kind of more beneficial for them too. I think that's really cool because I think there are a lot of seniors who just stop learning new stuff, right? Like when you start, you're so excited and you learn all these things. Um, mm -hmm. and a lot of people lose that. Uh, and I think anyone that keeps that when they've got the experience, they get really dangerous, right? Like <laughs> you can really do, you can, <laughs> you can really. Um, yeah. Cause I'm already trying to learn Houdini cause I've been working for a few places and, um, they you know, for effects and they use Houdini and I'm like, like, if it's a little thing like, oh, let's adjust this animation or let's slow this down. I'm like, I feel like I could do that if I knew Houdini. So um, I actually had mentioned to one company, I was like, you know, if someone could kind of record a demo for Houdini, like, I, I can't imagine how different it is from my, because I literally have never opened that program myself. But, and I was tempted to kind of, because the effects artist was like out for a day and I had to wait. And I was like, oh, I wonder if I open it, could I even like figure it out? But I was like, I'm not going to touch it. But yeah. I'm like, I want to learn a little bit of Houdini because I feel like I could also probably create my own mats to make the comping side easier if they're not outputting certain mats i know how to build my own cg mats yeah. and um again i could i could adjust some animation i know how to open the the graph editor and like adjust the curves and stuff if you know slow, like so I'm like okay I, I think i'll learn that program too but for now mm -hmm. i haven't had that the the time because you know that's it's probably like a lot a lot more involved i would say especially since i literally have never i didn't even i haven't even watched the tutorial for houdini so i think sometimes it's closer to nuke than my like apart from being 3d obviously but it's all you know oh. it's all node gray based and it's kind of non-destructive like you can go like my you can't go back right it's like a one-way street you're like mm -hmm. going down down oh i want to change it uh start again and houdini is a bit like nuke you can change that node and everything downstream will oh, okay. pipe through so you've got that but it's like nuke in 3d so it's like twice as hard like mm -hmm. four times as hard i don't know like the to the power of two as hard <laughs> <laughs> as nuke but uh yeah i mean um uh, yeah go for it i mean i think you'll you know if you can use mine you can use nuke i think you between that knowledge you can you know you can do it but this is cool. So it's going to go back to the pandemic. So you were saying you had a lot of time with your daughter, but you were freelancing then. So did, did freelancing well, speak? initially I had a break, a gap in work because there was a period where like, yeah, I think I, like I was working for a company, my contract was ending. And then I think that was like May, like it was like, everyone was kind of figuring out, okay, the company has to close down, you know? 
but we were they were like okay you guys can work from home and then it was like all right everyone worked from home and then it was like everything started shutting down so it was like yeah. we were just home you know so because during that time shoot. where it was like i wasn't yeah so like i wasn't working and i like she wasn't going to school like n- nothing was open so we were just you know home yeah i i mean did you get did um did you get support in the u.s i don't know what this what what the deal was out there during that time exactly yeah i think they gave everyone i mean i think everyone was eligible for unemployment if you weren't employed at that point so that was pretty much what you know people were depending on oh and then they did the stimulus the stimulus packages (laughs) was that useful i guess it was i mean i I don't know i mean you real realistically you weren't really spending any money because you couldn't go anywhere so (laughs) Yeah, no, in fact, I found like once you start working from home, you start saving so much money because you're just not, you're not paying for lunch. I mean, I know you try and bring your own lunch, but you're not commuting. You're not doing these things. Oh, man. I I mean, <laughs> the commute to New York, because you have to pay a toll every time you go in. A toll. And then yeah. the parking and then the gas. <laughs> and then I had to pay a nanny. So it was a lot of expense, you know. And you were saying like a four hour commute you were doing at one point. Yeah, two it. hours. Two. It took two hours to go and two hours. That was just because traffic was just like so backed up. It was like you just weren't moving <laughs> the whole time. It was like miles of just like slow, slow traffic. Yeah, I don't think I. I. I I'll be honest. I. I don't think I could do that. Um, especially driving. Like at least if you're on a on a train or or a bus, you can kind of zone out, read a book, or even fall asleep if you're tired. If you work a long day, just like to get and drive a car, I don't know. I, I, I sort of <laughs> well, I that. tried the bus. I literally tried the bus, train, subway, path. I tried all of my options. And then in the end, driving was just the best because well, what would happen was like at work, I would be like, oh, I need to leave at six because the last bus to my house is at six. And then I would be stuck. And I'm yeah. like, wait, I have to go. Like, I, I have to get home. So then I realized, okay, you know, I mean, of course I could have just left too, but it was like, I kind of get attached to my assignments. Like I just, I want them to be done and like complete and I want to make my deadline. So um, I was just like, okay, I think I should just drive to work. And then when I'm caught up in something at work, I don't have to worry about yeah. missing the bus or something, you know, yeah. or the train, like the last train out. So that was the only reason why. Because I, I did, I, I used to take the bus, but the bus took just as long, of course, because it's on the same road as, you, as you're yeah. driving your car. And the train makes so many stops that it wasn't like necessarily faster, but I could, I could sleep on the train or something. I could just sit back and like not think about anything. But I also, since I get attached to my projects, like I'll be thinking about what I have to do at work and like, oh, I wish I could have finished this. So even every day at work, I set my own goals and I try to like just finish that, like my own personal goals. And like, if I don't get to them, then I'll be like, oh, like, you know, it's yeah. kind of like in my head. I, I think that's good though, to, to, to be the your own, your own producer to a certain extent, because you've got producers obviously, but I think it's some, there's some ways that you can, you know what you want to achieve. Right, you mm-hmm. more than they know what they need to get done for the project, but you know what you want to achieve uh, long yeah. term as well. So I was going to ask, what would your advice be to um, to new artists or people want to be new artists or people trying to up their game? One, you always have to be learning. There's just so much to learn. I mean, that's that's what I like about freelancing too, because you know you're. Every company's different. Some companies have a very rigid pipeline. Some have no pipeline. So you have to know how to work within a pipeline, but you also need to know the Nuke tools well enough where if a company doesn't have a pipeline at all, you need to like check your project settings, like make sure the the length is right. Like you have, you have to do all that yourself if they don't have something that's automatically doing it. So I, I would say freelancing and bouncing around to different places um, it's definitely beneficial if you're really trying to learn the ins and outs of new because it's like I I mean I, I don't think I've been to any two companies. Some of them have similar structures, but they're all all their pipelines are different, of course. Yeah. And um you're you're always having to figure out how you're gonna work within those pipelines. So knowing how to do everything yourself as far as like 
starting up your project, building your script, checking the color, like making sure your right notes are set. Like you knowing all of that, you, you do need to know all that. All those, you might work somewhere and you never even have to use that, you yeah. know, that skill of your, your own. But just knowing it, because again, you might get put in a situation down the road. Like, you know, you, and it's like recently I worked somewhere and they didn't have any pipeline and everything took so long. And um, like, cause we just had to like even render from our computers. So it was like taking so much time. So it was like, well, well how, how am I going to be efficient in this situation? Like, what can I do to make sure I'm still meeting deadlines? Although everything's pretty much manual at this point. So you really have to have that knowledge, you know? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, never stop learning, but also testing like testing, don't be afraid to take time, even when you're working, um, even when you have deadlines to just try your own ideas. You might ask someone for help and they might suggest something. And then you could probably even take that a step further. You know, you just trying something different, like, you know, let me just try this out because, and it might not work. So, you know, everything you try won't work, but it's good to just explore because even if it didn't work on that down the line, you might run into something and it's like, oh, let me try that same technique. Maybe it's going to work here and then it'll work. So you have to kind of, ex it's like experimenting. So you experiment with Nuke yourself. You can watch tutorials, you can learn processes, very rigid structures. You do this first, then this, then that, but you also have to just be able to move around organically, you know? Yeah. So I would say that's also important. Like I'll be reading a chapter and it's like, I, I know almost everything I'm reading and then it'll be like one little thing. So then all these little things add up and then they become a lot of information yeah. that, you know, you, it's like, yeah, you don't need to read maybe a chapter on, uh, I don't know, like adding grain or something like you're adding grain to every shot, but you know, you're reading it and, and then it's like one thing might stick out and it's like, Oh, I could try that, you know? So I'm always picking up little bits of information that way too. So I would say constantly just, just spend an hour reading, like, you know, leisurely, I would say those are the most important things. Don't, and I, one thing I would say too, because I know a lot of people, um, and even me, I was questioning whether I should take a full-time job. And a lot of people, like, they just want to work one place for, like, as long as they can. But uh, in general, working one place long-term, I mean, you have to do what you think is best. But I think as far as learning and really growing as an artist, it's, it's good to actually move around. And in this industry, the good thing is a lot of companies rely on freelancers. Like they're not just going to hire a full set of staff for their company. Like it's based on what shows they get, like what, how many projects they get. So every company is always hiring freelancers. So if you're moving around, you're, you're learning so much more um, in, in a shorter amount of time than probably if you would stay one place for that same amount of time. That's what I found. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I think there's definitely like when when you start in a new company as well, there's that big learning curve. And like you say, they can be really different. Mm -hmm. I, I can think of the extremes. I've worked in both extremes. No pipeline. Something like Framestore where you actually have tutorials on the pipeline. Mm -hmm. so you have a very, very deep, really like impressive pipeline. Yep. Right. Um, so and everything in between uh, and stuff that's like just off the shelf and stuff that's completely custom mm -hmm. just plain weird and just plain dumb yep <laughs> all of it all the range do you, do you have your own like settings you take around with you like your own little you know, menu py or your own set of gizmos that you bring with you where you go i don't have my own set um I, I i have like a mental list i guess so if i'm working somewhere like oh do you guys have this tool do you guys have that tool but also, like I said, I, I'm always trying to experiment anyway, or like when, once I was working somewhere and I, I was looking for this tool and they didn't have it. And then I started talking to another artist who was full time there. And then he was excited. He was like, I never even seen that tool. And then um, he like built it from like, he just built the tool. And then we kind of worked together to kind of get something similar, but it was different. 
and then it worked a little bit different. So like, I don't, I, I don't mind, like, I like trying different stuff. And sometimes I come up with some workflows that I, I like, I don't even know if I could duplicate it twice, like naturally, <laughs> like, I'll just be like, I'll just be in the zone and I'll just be like creating something. Of course, having, having, and, and that's also part of the learning. Like, again, you need, it's good to have those tools. But also you have to work as it, like sometimes you might not have access to those tools because in some companies it has to be ingested into the pipeline or it won't render on the farm. You'll get errors. So you might not always even have the option to use the tools, but, you know, most tools you can turn into a group. You can look at what's being done and then you can rebuild them yourself or you can edit them. So it's good to have the tools, but I also think it's good to just know how, how the tools were built, what the purpose of the tools were. And then you might not be able to completely duplicate it, but you can do something similar. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you do have anything, it's some of those, like, there's some quite handy stuff like Google Keep and, and things like mm -hmm. that or GitHub. And because you can then copy paste stuff sometimes, even if you, as a group, the thing of turning mm -hmm. Gizmo into groups is like, yeah, if you if anything custom, just don't leave a Gizmo in your script. It's got to be a group. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's the way. Um, but, um, but also knowing what they do, because some of those people are using these, these Gizmos that are really so like, you might as well just use the nodes yourself and you'd have <laughs> a little bit more control if you just yeah. built it. Um, and some of they're just heavy. They just they've just got too mm -hmm. many nodes in them. They're just they're just making your script bigger and slower than it necessarily needs to be. Um, especially if you're only using it to do one very yeah. simple thing. And I like to take things apart, so I'm always trying some some um some tools you can't open like they're like locked. You can't ungroup you can't group them and open them up. But like anytime I get one that I can, I'm like looking through and I'm like, oh what what did they do here? Like, how is this working? So I, I actually like to take things apart too. So as often as I can, I'm, I'm like looking through though. And that's, that's also something that I would say, um, for, for junior artists, like, don't be afraid to like look through the tools because you can also learn a lot, just, you know, stepping through the build. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll make a new tool from that tool. Like I'll change something and then I'll have a new tool yeah. myself. Yeah. So when Kofi put the shout out and he was like, I want to, I, I, I want to speak to mothers working in VFX and you, you answered that mm -hmm. and you actually preempted me. Cause like I say, I, I'd been seeing your comp stuff come up on LinkedIn. So I was going to get in touch with you anyway, but you got there first. So I was going to ask what you were thinking you wanted to say when you, when you um, answered that shout out. Well, yeah, I think in general, like for, you know, I guess even parents, you know, you have, you have two kids. Um, and especially like for mothers, like, you know, it's, it's kind of like you have, you, you know, you, you want to be clo as close as possible to your kids. And then, you know, like for me, compositing and visual effects is like a very passion. Like I said, I did all kinds of art, so I'm very passionate about art. And now like, I'm like, I get so attached. I'm very passionate about my, my work. And then it's like, well, how do you, how do you find a balance? where you're not like lacking on either end of, of those things. And, um, you know, I, I, I know some, some women in the industry who had to like leave their, their families, like maybe in LA and they're in New York, you know, like leave for six months or eight months because mm -hmm. they couldn't find work in LA and then they could only find work in New York. So like, it's like those kind of sacrifices that some people make or some people will leave their kids with like their parents and then they'll go to Canada to work. So it's kind of like you, you want to um, pursue your passion. You know, you want to have a career, you want to do something you love, um, but you also want to be there for your kids, but you also want to provide for them. So it's like so many different variables that, that happen when you, you know, you in this industry, because it's so time. It's, it's there's so much time. Like the work just requires so much time, and yeah. um, you know you want to you want to succeed. You want to be you know do great projects. You want to feel proud of your work, but you also want to be a great parent. You know you want to feel proud of your parents, and you know you want to be there for your kids. So um, I think like for for mothers or parents in the industry, it's like like I said, how do you find that balance? 
And that's why I was saying how I'm, I'm trying to avoid taking another full-time job right away because I want to be, have more control of my schedule and I want to be able to set aside the time to spend with my daughter, you know, um, you know, she's in school during the year. So actually now I'm planning to take the summer off. So like when she has summers off, I think I'm going to take my summers off and then I'm going to spend the whole summer with her. So we'll both have yeah. that extra all day, like time together. And that wasn't necessarily something that I was striving for before the pandemic. But now after we had so much time, I'm like, I feel like there needs to be a period of time in the year because, you know, like, like I said, sometimes you're working 12 hours, uh, you know, and, and you're like, I'm in, you know, you're so into your work. It, I like, I'm not looking at the clock like, oh, I'm tired of this. Like, I love working, but I also want to make sure I'm having like a substantial amount of time where I can just, you know, put work aside completely and just spend time with my daughter. And I, when you're working from home, because one thing I've also found is like, I can, I can sort of say, I mean, we, we always had childcare and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I, now it's like, I can sort of, while I'm working from home, I can kind of go, I need to go and pick up my daughter at three or mm -hmm. you know, 20 past four, if she's doing a club or something. Um, and then, you know, and I can make that time back at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've got, is are your clients sort of similarly flexible or are they yeah. a little bit more rigid with that? Yeah, that? everyone's been super flexible. So um, I have to do the same thing. I take a, I actually try to take a break. Um, I take my lunch break later to account for. So I use my lunch yeah. break to pick my daughter up. But then even when we come home, um, I take an extra hour and I spend time with her at home. And then when she goes to sleep, I can always jump back on and make up my time. You know, so I kind of like now I, I feel like I can have the time to not just take her to school and pick her up, but also I try to make like just time to spend with her, dedicate, like even if it's just an hour every day where we can do something. Because before when I was commuting, um, some days, you know, she would be not, she hadn't woken up when I would have to leave for work, she would still be asleep. And then I would come home and then the nanny would have already put her back to bed. So it was like, we didn't even have 30 minutes, you know, that day. So yeah. now I'm like, you know, I think I, I value the time, even if it's 30 minutes or an hour, I value the time together um, more. And I'm glad that, you know, I, I only commuted heavy for one year, but I'm glad I didn't have to continue on doing that long term or yeah. leaving her and going to LA or going to Canada. Like, you know, these, these huge sacrifices that um a lot of parents have to make in the in the industry kofi as well um as a parent and he he went to germany to work and now he's actually working for the same german company but he's working remote so he doesn't have to go anywhere mm -hmm. uh, and it's even cooler because they can't ask him back into the office because the office is in germany so. <laughs> yeah oh right uh, you know so i mean those kind of things i mean have definitely improved and i think some in some ways although the pandemic was awful and lockdown i don't want mm -hmm. to dismiss any of because i know you know i know a lot of people yeah. who died as well so i know but i also know that for families that were not um that were able to sort of get by economically mm -hmm. there was that feeling of like wow we've got time together mm -hmm. like we can actually you know spend all day together and uh, sometimes it could be too much and i think also when they're that age that's when they really want you around. Like they, mm -hmm. they, they do get a bit older. They do get to yep. like, they don't want to be around their parents. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what you don't want to do is like spend all that, those years when they really want you around, yep. you know, being busy. And then you advance to your career and you've got all this mm -hmm. time. And you're like, Oh, I'm going to make up for this time. And they're like 15. They're like, right. Oh wait, mom. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm having my, I'm having a good time. Yeah. Cramping my style. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's like a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And then they'll get used to you. Like not being around, you know, like they're like, okay. So you, you, you kind of want to like, I think it's great that we have this balance now and I'm, I'm trying my best to hold on to it, you know? And right now I feel yeah. like even, even with, I, I mean, I would actually say I've grown as an artist more during this remote work time because um, I've just, even having access to my computer, like all day, like if I can log in, like I say, sometimes I'll have these ideas and try, want to try things and I, I'll log in here or there and like, Oh, let me see if this works. Let me see if this works, you know? So just being able to just have the time 
to try so much different stuff without having to like, cause I used to stay at the office really late on Sundays and I would just like be there until the person was like, okay, Shonda, we got to lock up. Like we, you gotta go. So like, I would just be there as long as I could trying to like do new things. And now I can do that from home. Like at any time I have, and that I've grown so much just from having that access, you know? And, and also the, the fact that there's not the compromise now of like, spend time with mm-hmm. her because you, say you can you can do that when she's asleep yep uh, assuming she goes to bed early which is unusual for me like my kids don't go to bed ever yeah so, <laughs> i don't know like i don't know what you mean <laughs> well like, she, they go to bed and then i, seven, I so collapse she has a very strict bedtime routine for now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've noticed you've been blogging and putting some of your thoughts online mm-hmm. um do you want to tell us a little bit about that because that's kind of cool yeah so um i think so like there was a time when i even when i was in the office so i while i was working i would i would have like my little notepad and i would i would i would be doing my work but like anytime there was something that i was like hmm maybe this could be done different but of course i was like well right now i can't do that i gotta finish this shot i would just start jotting stuff down and it was like a list of questions or if i was trying something and um it was too hard and then i had to ask my neighbor and they would chime in and it was like they don't have like the time to explain it but they can go ahead and just tell me so anyway i would make this list every day and then I knew like one supervisor came in early in the morning. So like I would come in early too with my list and I would like pull up a chair and I would like start, I would sit next to him like, hey, okay, here's my list for today. Like, can you explain this to me? Can you explain this? And he was like, and he was like a teacher. Like he was like going really into detail. And I was like, wow, you're really good at explaining things. So I knew like he was my go-to for questions, but people, other people would see me talking to him and then they would come over to me like, so what, what what did he tell you? What were you guys, what did he show you? Like, and I was like, well, you know, you have the same access to him. Like, I'm just asking him questions. You can ask him too. So I, I realized like, you know, some people won't ask the questions or um, maybe they didn't know how to um, get the information, how to ask the questions or anything like that. So I, I like, I would then help other, I would help other artists. I, I was just an artist. I haven't been a lead yet or a supervisor, but I would always be going around the office, like helping other people, like with their questions. And people felt really comfortable coming over to me. Like, you know, like it was almost like, okay, I I love helping people, but it's like, you know, I I think just the way that I was, I was communicating or presenting information or whatever, people just felt really comfortable asking me questions. So um, I knew that, I would break things down a little bit differently, or I was able to explain things a little bit differently, especially since I watched so many tutorials, you know, I know how you can get Mm. jammed up in the way that things are being explained. Because I think sometimes when people do tutorials, they, they know what they're thinking in their head and they're kind of going through the steps, but there's still like gaps of information missing, you know? And sometimes it's very simple things. And it's like, like, even me, I would be trying to follow along the tutorial. And I'm like, wait, it's not working. Like, did I miss something? And it was like, no, there's just something, you know, that they didn't really explain probably because they, they were, it was just in their head, you know? So yeah, I would, I, I was just like, you know, I think, I think there's little gaps of information or like these little tips or little bits of information would be really helpful for other artists, you know? Um, and as I'm, as I'm trying new things and I'm like, oh, this is cool. You know, I'll share it. Anything that I think kind of streamlines the process. Cause I'm really big on trying to streamline processes or thinking of it. Like, how can this be done faster? Like, I don't like, that's like, my mind just goes races to that. And so I, I'll try to yeah. share little bits of information like that, that maybe people don't automatically think of. So where can we go? Where can people find this stuff? The only place that I've been posting it for now is on LinkedIn. I am working on doing some video tutorials um, soon. And yeah, like some of the places that I've been working recently, I've actually been doing video demos for them, for other artists. It will be the same thing. Like we'll have this set of shots and they'll be hard. And I'm like, okay, how can we get through these faster? 
and then I'll figure out something or a workflow and then I'll I'll make a I'll do a demo so that all the other artists can kind of kind of work the same way. Because that was the other one. I saw your shout out on LinkedIn and it was like I want some hard green screens because all the tutorials are too easy. Yeah. And I totally agree. And 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 the match move is even worse because they'll they'll always have like this this dolly shot of like mm -hmm. a side a sidewalk, you know, with 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 a letterbox. It's like <laughs> okay yeah i can solve that anyone can solve that you know but that's not what you get you know yeah. you're not getting full right. focus put yeah. someone in, in the foreground defocus people mm -hmm. um half the green screen you know with green screens it's like half the green screen isn't covered they're wearing something reflective mm -hmm. they're wearing something green or they're wearing green makeup so... or the or the or the green screen is lit so that it's actually kind of blue cyan because the lighting's all blue on it <laughs> or <laughs> or they're too close to the screen or they put on a black magic like the uh a soft, fo yeah. a soft focus filter on the camera so that they've got like a big green like line around them you know or the the screen is really bright and the background yeah. that you're putting in is really dark because they've not or they've lit them from the wrong direction and so it's on and so everything. forth and these things are never in the tutorials right so you just have to battle your way yeah. through and sometimes it's just brute force but, um, and I, you know, it, it would be good to just get people like, actually, like, this yes. is the green screen, right? Like, <laughs> give us, like, because, and, and I think you get overwhelmed, especially when you're a junior artist, because, I mean, I've had my days where I would be like, you know, I'm like ready for it. Like, even actually when I, when I was first starting out, like, I spent so much time, like, I would go to work and if I couldn't do something, I would really be trying to be, like, I would be at home trying to figure out, okay. So I, you know, that's when I had the paid subscriptions and I'm like, okay, he's doing this, he's doing that. And then it was just like, nothing was ever as simple when you were back at work trying to follow the same techniques. And it was like, well, what? what's how am I gonna figure this out you know and I think it's hard yeah I think I think it's hard to be deliberately bad right because even when they shoot it and they try and do it like production like FX Video is very good with that they're all mm -hmm. VFX artists and supervisors they know um and and the reality is like the priorities on shoot it's not that they're incompetent it's just the priorities are so different Mm -hmm. The cost of the actors, the cost of the location, mm -hmm. the cost of all of the, that stuff is so much more than the extra days it takes to composite that you know, yeah. you're just so low down the pro list of priorities. Mm -hmm. right? um, and 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 you can't replicate that. I think when you're shooting to make yeah. um, course materials, no, like you now you think with with visual effects that you're gonna get cl cleaner stuff, right? Because I feel like now people are taking a little bit of an effort to make things cleaner. But even recently, I had to work on a movie and it was testing everything I thought I knew about King. <laughs> like, it was crazy. And I, I was like, oh my God, this is so hard. Like, so I can't even imagine how, like, if I was, if it was the junior me, like, there would have been no way. Yeah. So, and it was funny because I feel like they just gave me all the hard, like the really hard shot. Like, all right, we need Shonda to do it. But I was like, wait, you know, I feel like other people need to learn how they're going to tackle this stuff too. So um, I, at first I was intimidated and I was like, all right, let me, let me take it, take it down. Let me think about this. How am I going to get these? Done? And it was like crazy. Like I've not seen footage shot like, and I'm like, this is like 2022. Like I've not seen footage shot like this. And I was like, wow, like, I guess it just had to be done, but like, obviously it has to be cleaned up. So how am I going to do it? So I, I just like figured out a few different techniques to get, get through it. And then I was even like, wow, this, this is good. Okay. So then I did a demo for them and I was like, okay. And then I was like, you know what? We need a tutorial that has some messy, crazy stuff going on because yeah you like I had to spend some time even trying to figure out how I was going to get through it like if if you have like a junior artist or you know I feel like we they they the part of the training and the tutorials should be learning how to tackle all of these different things there was like so like uneven lighting there were like tracking markers all the way down the screen so everything had tracking markers in it like all of the people all of the smoke all the dirt was oh. popping. It was like so much stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And what color were the tracking markers? <laughs> red. Out of quick cure. <laughs> yeah. And what color was the screen? Oh, red. And what was the screen? Green. Blue. The green screen. Blue. Blue and red. 
that's interesting yeah. so you've got like a bit of magenta going on as well because you've got the effect yeah so so yeah, and, and, so yeah, yeah. You, it was so hard, <laughs> and it, 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 it was like patching. It was like, a, a, and then I had to patch things together. But part of the steps that I had to go through to even get something that I could kind of clean faster, I was like, okay, I need to share this with people. And I one like I had I had came up with a process. They they had a tool. I had wrote in the chat like, I need to do this. Do you guys have a tool? And then someone um, messaged me back and they were like, I think this is maybe what you're looking for. And then I figured out how to use that tool to get some things done faster. And I was like, oh my goodness, I wish I knew about this tool like the whole time I was here. Like I could have been using this. So um, yeah. yeah, so I, I was like, you know what? Let me, um, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna find the footage. I was also thinking I could just put it together. I could just throw some elements on top of each other on top of a <laughs> green screen and render it out and then clean it up just so that you're really having to tackle some real like stuff when you're doing it find a short film that's using green screen that you know and just say look i'll do the work for for you for mm -hmm. free but i have access to the footage and i'm going to use it in my tutorial and i might sell my tutorial you know or put it on as my own thing mm -hmm. um because because you know that probably that short film that it's going to be a lot harder right the green screen yep. than, than what you would shoot yourself because you you just can't shoot it back you mm -hmm. can't deliberately shoot a bad green screen <laughs> like, so, but then the down downside is that then you commit to actually doing that whole yeah work, which will I mean. probably be <laughs> so, i don't know like there's a that could be, yeah that could be the flip but it's side also too. good because i uh, like i i actually sometimes seek out difficult and challenging work because i'm like that's how i it's like the stepping stones i find out what my weaknesses are so like this whole journey of like becoming like a very good compositor was like every time i would go work at a company i would ask for feedback even as a freelancer i was like you know do you have any feedback for me how was my performance you know do you think that um what my what were my strengths or do you and sometimes you know people would respond because that's kind of like a full-time thing where you get actual feedback every year on your work but i was like i yeah. want to know what things i can improve on you know like it was like my own personal list so i i kind of i knew what what like task i needed to improve on being able to do because i would get something and it would be too hard or i would get something and i couldn't do it so i was like okay i know i need to be better at this and i know i need to be better so i could do that myself but then when it came to how I was working in an environment or how I was communicating, um, you know, to, to other people, that's, you kind of think you might think you're okay, but you need feedback because, you know, being personable, being able to communicate, all of those are also things that are important when you're working, not just being able to do the work, you know, and that's important for everyone, right? Like whether some, I mean, in your case, I, mean, I think you, you come across as quite confident, uh, but also for people that are, are not confident at all and, then they need that feedback as well. Mm -hmm. They need to know actually, you know, you're, you're, you're you know, you're, you're actually, yes, you're struggling with screen screen because it's really hard. But actually, mm -hmm. you're doing better than like most of the artists. You know, maybe, um, maybe some people might be on that green screen with all the red tracking markers, thinking they're just really bad. And they mm -hmm. say, no, actually, like you're one of the best artists here. But yeah, <laughs> like this shot is a nightmare. <laughs> so, uh, you know, people, I think wh wherever you are, um, or whatever situation you're in, you need it. Right, you need, yeah. you need that feedback. And I, and I think it's it's interesting that you, time and time again, the people that I s uh, hear from and speak to who are like among the best, are all doing that, mm -hmm. like, going and like getting feedback from people when when it's not being like just given to them mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned another thing that I, I was going to pick up on which is that people were saying we've got shots and they're like give those shots to Shonda and <laughs> what do you think makes you that person well I think it's because one like like I said I'll be like I, I will definitely find a solution right and what I, the way that I try to work, like if, if they're going to give me a bunch of shots and then I look through them. So I actually, I prefer to get groups of shots because I want to know, okay, how mm -hmm. are they similar? How are they different? So I'm kind of attack, attacking it like in a very strategic way from the beginning. So, you know, some places they'll give you one shot at a time and then they'll give you a, another shot that's almost similar to it. And then you're like, okay, if I had this group of shots initially, like I would have approached it different. So anyway, even when I'm freelance and I tell companies, just just give me whatever shots you want me to do this week, just give them to me. 
So I'll go through the shots, I'll play them, I'll see what's different, what's the same. And then if they're, for the, all the shots that are similar, I'll try to build um, like a workflow that can be translated easily to all the other shots. So even if the shot's very hard, I might spend one day doing that one hard shot but then the work that I did for that, even though all the other shots are different, the camera movements are different, different things are happening, all of the hardest things in those shots, I'll be able to use the same technique to finish those tasks. And then I'll hopefully, I'll once I figure out how to do the hard thing fast, then I'll be able to do all the easy stuff faster. Yeah, when the producers know you too on that, because sometimes they might wonder why you're taking so long on that first shot. But mm -hmm. then, you know, when you've done that shot and then you're like, bang, 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 mm -hmm. bang. And then they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. I get what you were doing. You yeah. Um, but they have to know you. They have to have the confidence to know that's yeah. what you're going to do. I mean, and even, <laughs> I guess, you know. I mean, I come, and then I communicate with them. That's what I'm doing. I say, hey, you know, it's, it's going to take a little while on this one. But, you know, I'm working so that I can translate this over to the other shots. Because I don't want to spend a lot of time on every single shot. And, I mean... For me, like one one of the things for me, like I try to my my goal is to see if I could do something fast or faster. So I'm always looking for different ways to be more efficient when I'm working. And I think people pick up on that because like like there was a time I I had got some shots, and um they were like, oh you're waiting for uh CG so you can't really start yet. I say if I have footage I can start. Like I don't need to wait. There's always something that I could do. Like so on my own i like I, I work in very structured way so like i like to set up all my shots i like to do all the track and i like to render all my you know d notes i whatever i can do on the front end and then i can spend a little more time on like integrating the effects or the cg which might be a little more involved so yeah i i think people pick up on the fact that i'm probably kind of organized um that i will try to troubleshoot and find solutions that um, can be um, that can work on multiple shots throughout the show or the, you know, the film or whatever. And, um, and then I communicate very well. So I let people know when I'm running into issues, um, when I need help, I'm not holding on to anything like, Oh, like if I can't do something and I, you know, I could quickly like put together a few different techniques and then if none of them work, then I know right away, like, okay, someone else has got to help me with this, you know, or I need some input or I need some, some tips or tricks, like, you know? So, um, yeah. Cause you know, I think that's one thing, even I used to do when I first started, like if something was really hard, I would just be like trying to figure it out. And then I just didn't, I didn't have the solutions like, you know, so, and it's fine. If you don't have the solutions, you're, you're learning, you're growing, you're developing your skills, but you have to like raise the flags right away. Like you have to be like, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. The time to say I'm not going to make the deadline is like immediately that you get like within mm -hmm. half an hour of getting the shot and not 20 minutes before the deadline. Yeah. I think as a junior, you're scared because they, they send you this shot. They say we need it in, in a day. And you look at this and you think, how can I do this in a day? And you try mm -hmm. to do it in a day and then you fail. And mm -hmm. then, and, but maybe like you, no one could do it in a day. Maybe, maybe, right. maybe, or maybe they just didn't actually want something as hard as what you were mm -hmm. expecting. Maybe they want something simpler, right? They, they don't. They don't need that because also I think there are different projects and different companies and different budgets. Mm -hmm. There are different expectations in terms of results, in terms of quality, in terms of. Um, I mean, you know, like tech checks can be. You know, let's check the grain, or, <laughs> or they can be like as long as you spent on the rest of the comp, you know, depending on. <laughs> yeah, depending on, and that know, takes time for you to actually check it. Yeah. And like, I, I like to check my stuff and find the issues because, there, you know, again, when I was a junior, you'd just be getting notes back. Okay, fix this. And you're always like, you're feeling this pressure that you have to render it and get it out to someone. But it doesn't, like, it, it, if it comes right back, then that that's just this like that, you know? And then you sit out again, then it comes right back. So now I spend the time, tr I try to spend the time tech checking I'll check the grain. I'll play it back. I'll play it back at eight frames. Sometimes I'll just watch it loop over and over again and just making sure I didn't miss it. I'll watch different parts of the screen to make sure there's no edit. And, and that takes a lot of time. Like, that's just not even me compositing. That's just me looking at the footage, trying to make sure it's good enough to send 
And then if I can get it sent with no feedback, that that was great. You know, so a lot of my stuff go yeah. through. I don't have any text notes. I don't have any notes back from the client because you, I just spend the extra time doing it myself, like on the front. And if someone's... Pr- and, if, and you're saving... Yeah. You're saving other people's time, right? Mm-hmm. You're saving a producer's time and a supervisor's time. Yeah, no, I, 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 I tend to panic and hit the like publish button too soon, and I, I know it as well. But I have the vice of like, I just check that. There's <laughs> a, there's a pressure. Like, there's a real pressure. Yeah, like... there's like a, yeah, but you have to be aware of like your own like mm-hmm. impulses, and I think I have this thing of like, I just want to show, I want to be like, you know, quick draw, you know, bang, uh-huh. there's a shot back. And, like, <laughs> yeah, but Dan. Just calm down. <laughs> yeah. And then whenever I yeah, do no, try to so... do that, I miss, like, simple stuff. Like, it will be like, yeah. oh, like, it would be something so simple. Like, oh, the time code's missing. Or something. I'm like, oh, how did I miss it? Then, I, then I'm like, how did I miss that? I caught everything else. So, um, yeah, I used, to, I used to just hit render. But one time, actually, like, um, actually, when I came back to New York, because I was like, when, like, New York is a little more fast paced than when I was in Michigan. So when I came back and I was getting so many notes and stuff, I'm like, what am I missing? So I just, I asked the lead, he was sitting right next to me. I was like, how do you tech check my work? How do you check shots? And, and he just, I, I was sitting next to him. He just showed me his whole process. And I was like, oh, okay. I'll at least make sure I'm doing all that before I send it to you, you know? And then, um, yeah. different, different companies, they tech check it differently or they, they check for different stuff. So, it was always like, well, okay, so I'm doing this l- list of things, but and then if I get another note, like if I'm like somewhere else and they give me a note, and I'm like, how did I miss that? I'm like, how are you looking at this shot? <laughs> so I would kind of build my own yeah. list of like how different people are reviewing my work, how they're finding these issues that I'm apparently missing, and then I I just have like a, a firm list of things that I do. I think I posted that too on my LinkedIn, like how I tech check my own work. And that that's those steps alone will help you, you know, at least maybe get through with no notes. Um, mostly I would say probably I'm getting creative notes, which are subjective to whoever's viewing it. So shots going through with no notes is, is worth, you know, that's worth a 10 minute read at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'll, there'll be a link in the description, obviously. Do you have a website? Just my um, standard website, shondahunt.com. Shondahunt.com. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, have a good evening. Um, have a good afternoon, sorry. And uh, see you soon. Nice meeting you. Nice talking to you.